So till next, till next, till next, till next is what we call the telecommunication, telecommunication, network protocol, till next. So as a network engineer, this is a term that you're going to hear more and more times as you run your networks. Telnet is a protocol that allows you to access your network equipment remotely. Remotely via a terminal on your network management device, as if you've actually connected directly to the console of that device, or you've connected directly to that device using a console cable. So you can be able to do configurations and any management and monitoring via, via Telnet. So it's a very important uh, protocol in the running and management of a local area network. So as the enterprise network expands, supported devices may exist over a larger geographical distance due to the presence of branch offices that are considered part of the enterprise domain and that require remote administration. Additionally, the administration of the network is often managed from a central management location from which all devices are monitored and administered. Uh, so this is also important to note. Uh, but most of the time, you, you have a central management location for, for your network. Uh, so you'll get like uh, networks for banks and so on and so forth. Uh, they, they are actually managed from their headquarters. Uh, and uh, you just have maybe ICT personnel at particular branches just to offer uh, a little day-to-day -day support. So in order to facilitate this administration, Telnet protocol, one of the earliest protocols to be developed, is applied to manage devices. Principles surrounding the protocol and its implementation are introduced in this section. By the end of this chapter, you should be able to Lynn, are you there? Yes, explain the application and principles surrounding Telnet. Establish the Telnet service on supporting Huawei devices. devices. Thank you very much. Just like DHCP and FTP, Telnet also uses the client server model. Uh, it uses the client server model and Telnet can help you to access devices that are within your LAN or remote devices that you are, you are using the internet. Uh, you, you're connecting to those remote devices via the internet. So it can do both. Uh, it can do both. So Telnet represents a bi-directional, a bi-directional text-based terminal emulation program that is used over local and remote networks. So the remote devices generally can be in any location on this world, as long as it is accessible via the internet. So this means that you can actually work, you can actually work uh, as a network engineer for a company that is not in Kenya, yet you live and stay in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So once you connect to a device via Telnet, you can be able to work on it just the same way as you can when you connect to that device directly using a console cable. So the same uh, 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 command prompt that you get in order to configure the switch of the router is the same that you'll get when you, when you connect via Telnet. So it is text-based, meaning it offers a character user interface. Bidirectional, meaning you can be able to send commands and you can be able to get feedback uh, from the router or the switch that you're configuring. 
Again, Huawei routers, Huawei switches are capable of acting as telnet servers. Telnet, just like the previous protocol we looked at, uh, FTP, uses TCP. It uses TCP. And in particular, Telnet uses TCP well-known ports. Well-known. Well-known port 23. So the server will be listening and waiting for connections on port 23. TCP, well-known TCP port 23. Okay, so let's look at this explanation. So as we said, it operates on a client server basis. So you have the client and the server there. Now, the server will have a user terminal. Uh, a user terminal that is like hyper terminal in Windows. Hyper terminal interacts with what we call the terminal driver. the terminal driver to send commands and to receive feedback. But before we're able to send commands and receive feedback, we need to form a TCP connection via port 23 between the client and the server. Uh, then on, on the Telnet server, you have also a sudo terminal driver that will provide a login shell. So when you access that particular server, you'll have to be authenticated. Then you'll now be able to uh, uh, send commands. So the Telnet terminal driver drivers interpret the keystrokes of the user and translates them to a universal character standard, uh, which now operates as what called the virtual intermediary between the two systems. And this driver actually allows the operating system to receive the decoded characters. So that's why we have the drivers. Uh, it simply commands and the feedback from the commands you're able to access them in real time. Telnet supports uh, one of three authentication modes. Now authentication is when person can Telnet into your server without the need to be authenticated. Risky, risky, never do that. Then you have triple A authentication. Triple A authentication offers authentication, authorization and accounting. And when you're using AAA authentication, most of the time you'll need a username and a password. Then we have the password authentication. Password authentication, you only need a password. So you don't need, you don't need a, a, a username. The, the risk with that is that you cannot know who did what. With AAA, you can be able to know who did what uh, from the log files. But with password authentication, you cannot really account for who did what. So let's see how to configure Telnet. So we're going to configure this server here as a Telnet server. So to do that, we go into that interface that is connecting to that network segment uh, that the client is connected to. We give it an IP address. So it has to be reachable. It has to be reachable. The client must be able to ping the, uh, uh, the server. Then we create the, the virtual teletype interface, the V2I interface. So using, using the command user interface, uh, user interface V2I zero space four. So that means we've created five. We've created five uh, virtual interfaces. 
This can be extended, I think, to 15. Uh, so 0, 15, which can give us 16 interfaces. So 15 people can be able to access it at the same time. So that is that is what the, the VTY interface actually gives us. Then in that VTY interface, we can enter the authentication mode. So this time we're not using triple A, we are using password. Password. Then we can now set the password using the command set authentication password cipher. Then we press enter, and then we type the password, then we press enter. So Telnet requires authentication to be applied to the virtual teletype interface, VTY, before a connection can be established. On the host, on the host, we simply type Telnet, then the address of the Telnet server, the TCP three-way handshake is gonna go through via port 23 because the server is listening on this interface via TCP port 23. Then uh, you're gonna be told to log in. And after you log in, you're going to get the user view prompt, just like you've connected directly to the router or the switch using a console cable, using a console cable. Please note here, for example, they say the maximum number of VTY users is five and the number of current users is one. So if this number, if, if you've already used the five of them, any the sixth person trying to tell net will be unable to do so. So that is one instance. The other instance is it will provide a wrong password. You cannot be able to tell net. The other one is reachability. The server has to be reachable. Uh, so those are some of the conditions that need to be met before you are able to tell net. Okay. So I think this is what I've just told you. Uh, if the telnet service has been enabled, but a user is unable to establish a telnet connection, what are the possible reasons for this? So I want you to read the detailed answer that is below there, but I think I've mentioned some of those already. Uh, but I think there's a point maybe that I'm leaving out. So just check it, check it. Thank you very much.